All right, everybody, welcome back. It's Julia again down at the Foss Waterway Seaport with um, some bad ideas again with balloons. So this is going to be about 15 minutes today. I'm going to talk a little bit just basically um, basics about climate change, and then we're going to do a couple of demos. Hopefully I don't hurt myself or set off the sprinklers. And then we'll finish up with a little bit about what's being done right now to help us gather more data. So, all right, so starting out, whoops, stop that. <laughs> so I wanna talk a little bit about the greenhouse effect. So if you haven't heard of this before, basically there is a huge amount of heat and energy constantly coming from the sun, right? So the energy is coming from the sun and it's coming down to the earth. And then it gets, a lot of it gets reflected back and some of it goes out into space, it goes different places. But the greenhouse effect simply means that because of excessive carbon emissions, basically human impacts, um, more of that energy and heat is as it's going down to the earth, going up to the atmosphere. And you, as you can see in the slide here, it, instead of going back out into space like it normally would have, it gets caught up, let's just say, <laughs> and becomes again reflected back onto the surface of the earth. So you can see some carbon dioxide molecules up there in the atmosphere. So the greenhouse effect results in more heat being trapped underneath our atmosphere and a general warming of the earth. And that's been happening for a while. So where is all that heat going? Where's all that heat going from the sun and all that energy? We say heat, but it's really better to think of it as energy. Um, so the oceans have absorbed about 93% of all of that energy, which is measured in joules. And they, we estimate that the air, land, and ice absorbs about 7%. Well, that's pretty crazy. Um, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a demo that shows you exactly that that is true. I'm going to prove it to you. So what I've just shown you here is that air is not very good at, at absorbing heat. So it's a really good thing that we have the oceans to help us out with mitigating all these effects of climate change. So this is a balloon full of air. Now, I'm not very good at this, but... This represents the sun and heat energy. Okay, wait, safety first. I forgot my goggles, hold on. Okay, try this again. So this is air, simply a balloon full of air. Okay, so we're gonna make some heat hit the air and we're gonna see how well that air is able to dissipate or absorb the energy from this match. Ooh. Not very well. <laughs> All right, now, this, my friends, is a water balloon. So we can make some hypotheses here. We can hypothesize what will happen. So we know that when the heat hit the air and just the simple balloon, it popped. It couldn't handle it at all. Air is not great at absorbing heat. But water, I've just shown you, is a lot better. So you can take a guess if you think this balloon will pop, or maybe, back away just in case, because this is a pretty old balloon, or maybe, look at that, the balloon is just turning black, but because it's full of water, it's able to absorb the heat so well that the flame doesn't even pop the balloon going to burn myself before that happens. We'll do it one more time because it is such a cool demo to show you how effective the oceans are at absorbing all the excessive heat produced by the greenhouse effect and just naturally as well. Okay, here we go. I might be pushing the envelope a little bit here. Woo. I don't know how well you can see that. It smells pretty bad. I don't want to get it too close to my computer, but pretty amazing. So you can try that at home with your parents' help. 
so far nothing crazy has happened here. Um, so one of the things that we know about climate change is that it's really important that we gather as much data as we can to try to figure out how our oceans are changing and <clears throat> where that heat energy is being redistributed. Because when the ocean absorbs heat, it doesn't just stay in one place, it moves around. And if you watched our other demo about convection currents, we talk a lot about that. So it's really cool. <clears throat> Scientists knew they needed more data about the surface temperature of the ocean. It turns out most of that heat energy is being absorbed in about the top 2,000 meters of the ocean. And then the rest of it is, has gone down into the deep ocean. Now remember, we can talk about it as heat, but I, I prefer to use the word energy. Um, so it's being absorbed for now, and we want to know how much of a heat raise, temperature raise, that's causing in the oceans. And it's a lot of work to go out with a boat and dangle stuff over the side all day long to try to figure out the surface temperatures and the deep ocean temperatures. So this is really cool. It's a robot called the Argo. And these guys are running around right now in the ocean, almost 4,000 of them. So here's how they work. There's a satellite network, first of all, that had to be in place for them to communicate with. So you have this little robot and they're programmed. So it starts up at the surface and transmits the data to the satellite. You cannot transmit data when you're underwater. The signals will not go through the water unless you have a cable. So then it descends down all the way down to about a thousand meters and floats around takes salinity and temperature readings, very important for our climate. And then it goes even deeper down to 2000 meters. And you can see, then it starts to rise up again, taking salinity and temperature as it ascends. And that whole thing takes 10 days for it to come back to the surface and then transmit the data out again. And the data from the Argos are publicly available and is really, really critical to helping climate scientists understand what's happening to our oceans and how that's gonna impact the climate in the long term. So here is a map um, as of the 21st of April. You can see there were 4,046 Argo robot floats doing their business around the world. And if you go to the website, you can see how, um, you know, which countries are controlling which ones. Most of them, about 70% of them, I think now, are communicating with the Iridium satellite network, which is also used by boaters and people in distress. Um, and the satellite network is a whole nother presentation. But I wanted to show you guys what is being done to help figure out how much energy our oceans are absorbing and where is all that energy going? what is going to happen in the long term. Um, what we do know is that the warming of the oceans have not been even. So it's been warming more down in the Antarctic, and that's what's causing when you hear about ice melts uh, and things like that. And of course, as water warms, it expands, which is why we are having that sea level rise that you may have heard about associated with climate change. Um, but we are really lucky that water has such amazing properties that it can hold so much heat and energy that it won't even, that, that it'll save a balloon from popping from fire. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now, what scientists talk about a lot is at some point will there be a limit? If I had held the flame on the balloon for an hour, it probably eventually would have just burned right through we can assume, and popped the balloon. So that's the point of the Argo monitoring system, is figuring out um, how not to pop the balloon and how we're going to reduce carbon emissions around the world to help combat climate change and to save the oceans and save everyone. <laughs> so that's my little talk on climate change for today. And I, once again, nothing terrible has happened to me. I'm here in the empty museum. It's very cold. Um, the heat's been turned down to save money, so it's like 52 degrees in here. So I was wearing about three sweaters, but I changed for this. So I'm just going to see, um, check the Q&A in the chat here if anybody has any questions. 
And this will be available on Facebook and YouTube as well. And I want to remind you guys that we are so excited to be booking classes now for private lessons. So if your class was scheduled to come to a field trip here in the spring, or if you were thinking about it, um, we're taking almost all of our lessons online and we're doing cool things with our touch tanks. We're doing a lot of things with water quality and we're riding up into our whale skeleton and trying to help out um, the teachers and students as much as we we can with some fun and engaging education. So if you're interested in that, you can email us. It's education at fastwaterwayseaport.org. And we, um, we're pretty booked for next week, but we do have openings after that on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for private classes. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks again for joining me. And I'm going to figure out how to turn this off. <laughs> And uh, I hope you're all staying safe at home and we look forward to seeing you back here soon.